Hi everyone, this is Roy from Fresco. Fresco is the world's first blockchain art asset network. So blockchain technology. Oh shit. <laughs> All right, let's switch up the tone a bit because that might be too, you know, too, too formal. And I think that's not a good way to communicate on a topic like art. <laughs> we should be very inclusive for everyone. And that's why we decided to switch up the tone because we view the white paper and even sometimes when I see myself, I was like, who the hell is that guy? Can he talk anything about art? But I want to switch up the tone and I want to directly communicate with you guys. And so for Fresco, and you guys have seen right now, we have grown from an idea and right now almost to a movement for which we abandoned ICU model and does the ICD and not asking anything monetary in return by asking people to fill a 100 question test about the art world. So through the process, we're educating more than 100,000 people on art, hopefully within a month. I mean, this is huge. Like, even Momo and Matt, you cannot educate that many people about Warhol in a month at that scale. And if you go to our Telegram group, you see people literally were coming in and sharing ideas about how and why those painters are so expensive and they're very passionate about what, what the art can be and they say wow fresh can truly create something meaningful can create something very very epic in the art world i'll just leave it there and um i thought a lot about how to communicate with you guys like but i think right now there's another there's another major conference coming very fast that is april i think 25th to 26th, the Art Leader Network, which is in Berlin, Germany, where it's a summit for the art innovators and experts that New York Times bring together. Well, I don't ha necessarily have time to go to Berlin because we're very focused on securing partnerships with the art shows for the upcoming Art Basel. But I can see, I can share some of my thoughts with you guys through the conference agenda and hope you like it. Because I think the conference organized by New York Times did an amazing job, not only bring together the, the really the decision makers in the art industry, but also the, the agenda they set out is very, very, just very, very point out for us to explain Fresco. So we'll go through agenda by agenda and just give you an idea of how we help out. Cause by so far, I understand you guys might already have a knowledge about Fresco and what Fresco can do, but to give you another overview, Fresco is a blockchain asset network, and we hope to help out with three things, provenance, promotion, and liquidation of our work. So for provenance, well, if you're into our work, you know how hard it is. Even today, you try to buy at auction houses, the provenance is very, very opaque. It's very murky. because. What Provenance means to the not art people I'll explain to you is that it's a collection record. It's who owns the painting before. It's almost like if I sell this book to you, you want to keep this record that I own the book before, before you sell to another guy. And this is the Provenance. And still today, I mean, it's 2018. And to take a look at how the artwork Provenance is, is being organized, it's still through he says, see, she says. It's really you know, about how, like who owns a painting before, you don't have a clear record to show. And we can do that with blushing. And as you know, blushing, you can create an irrevocable record, which ties into the next part of what we're gonna talk about, the promotion of artwork. The, right now, the art, the art world, especially towards the flying art world, is very exclusive. Like the major galleries only have so many, only, each year can promote so many artists. And each year, you have so many young talents graduating from the top art school. Well, not all of them are gonna get signed by gallery, which gonna get promote their work, get their work to a museum to, for a show and for exhibition, which again creates a higher price at auction house. So a lot of artists have to do odd jobs or cannot pursue their dream. I mean, I personally have a lot of friends who are artists and who, to be honest, deliver astonishing work compared with a lot of other, what you call the mainstream established artists. But they simply, because they don't have that promotional channel for them to promote their work, and then their, the artwork price not being so high, even the large 
like 50 times 50 inch painting was getting sold for $1,000, which is very cheap. Compared with that frame, goes up for 20 certain million if it's a major artist work. I mean, this is a kind of like price discrepancy. Like we want to help solve. Like we want to really, to allow more artists to have a, to have a say, like to be able to promote their work. So, you know, that's why I think promotion can be, be a huge thing for us to focus on. And that's why we create Fresco. And especially through tokenization. So the way how Fresco tokenization gonna work is that if you have a painting, for example, if you have this as a painting, and then for us, the Fresco token you have gonna be able to, you can allocate those tokens to the painting. And that's an irrevocable process. That'll become a part of the painting. You carry on with that painting on blockchain forever. And that process is irrevocable because that has been done in the art history, art in, like the art, art world for a while. Like you take a look at the, like the Western way where people add gemstone and diamonds to the Bible cover, or even in the Chinese way that where people add the commentaries after each painting, called colophon. So this is always a way for people to show their appreciation for art and which may in turn increase art market value. I would just leave it like that. So what we create is, that's called fresh trust. And fresh trust is served as this additional layer that added onto the artwork to, indirect, to indirectly reflect the owner's own like inclination towards the work. And to even further help with the promotional work, because as you know, the token added to the artwork become irrevocable and become fixated in the art. And the, even the token supplier keep dimish, diminishing, but how can we have enough token in the circulation? Well, that's why we were very fortunate to meet Dr. Han Feng from Elastos, who's a pioneer in the crypto, cryptocurrency world and blockchain world for inventing Elastos, which along with Dr. Chen Rong, Elastos, has a, the ability for people to turn data into wealth. So essentially it helps people to, you can, you can help you secure your right, the digital data as your asset on blockchain. And then you can sell that data in limited edition. I mean, this is huge guys. And this is how I think the art world is being reinvented like during the last century where artists suddenly realize that rather than just painting like 10 oil paintings. Right now they can do, you know, 30 editions for one painting, for one oil painting. And maybe they sell that one oil painting for, you know, 20,000. Well, they sell the each edition for only a fraction of that price, just divide up by the edition number. That's usually in the form of lithograph, your silk print, or for sculpture, if you buy some Jeff Koons like balloon dog, he has the balloon dogs in either unique 50 edition or 500 edition and same thing for calls and the price just change up very dramatically but it always follow the track that if it's a unique work it works more and it's a 500 edition each edition price reflects a unique work if it's the same similar desired category and we take that inspiration very hard and we really feel that at the game changer and and we always want to tackle that part until we meet Elastos. Like Elastos provides us that solution where we can allow to issue the digital, really the, it's kind of the, sort of like the digital edition of an artwork on blockchain. And that's completely doable and people can trade that. And that, so that leads us to the next part about first edition. Like, I mean guys, first edition, just like I explained, it's a carry out of the old art system where it can help artists to generate more revenue through releasing a limited edition work of a unique artwork. And for us, each artwork on the Fresco platform is essentially a data, the artwork's blockchain data. Even though you add token to it or you trade it, essentially you, what we're doing that once you trade the physical artwork, th that blockchain data, we hopefully you transfer that data with you as well because that's how it functions. And it's just almost like you asking sometimes when you, Buy a, right now when you buy a work, you always ask for a certificate, which is in, on paper. That's very ineffective. So with blockchain, that record is publicly visible, anonymous, well irrevocable. So once that we, what we do with first edition that really, you help people create the edition version of that blockchain data. 
so that you can, like, for example, this one artwork on blockchain on um, Fresco that has 3,000 fresh trusts. Well, we give you, let it be an artist or a collector or anyone or our organization, just as long as who uploaded this artwork, like th as long as this artwork is a, is like a unique one on the platform, like who owns that artwork's data as a first owner, he has the right to release the edition. I mean, through that way, I imagine right now I have a work with 3000 fresh trust and then I release 10 edition of that. So each edition will worth 300. So as you know, Fresh Trust, you cannot take that out of your, out of the artwork because it's a part of the artwork. But the, with the Fresh Edition, it's almost like each artist is doing their own version of the fundraising on blockchain. So, but in a form of token, a form of utility token. So people, this way, an artist released 30 edition of this 3000 Fresh Trust worth of Fresh Edition uh, of artwork. And then each edition would just be worth 3000 divided by 30. And that's 100 per edition. And once you hold on to this edition, it ain't gonna just sit there and you know wait for another auction house to come out with a higher record next year. But rather, people are actually adding tokens to a regional artwork, to that 3,000 fresh trust value artwork, and increase the value of that fresh trust to in turn increase the value of their fresh edition. So for example, if that artwork's fresh Fresh trust value increase from three thousand to five thousand, so each addition gonna be worth five thousand minus thirty, which is definitely more than one hundred. So this way, and each addition essentially is a blockchain data, and blockchain data certificate corresponding to the token amount, and that can be liquidated. Uh, the trading of the blockchain data of that fresh addition is almost like a trading of a, uh, I think, a certificate among people, so that. You view that certificate has some unique value, and you trade that certificate, and you can sell this certificate for Fresco to utility token on platform. And the next thing we're gonna talk about is really, I think it's better to follow your agenda because I don't think I talk quite well without agenda. Even if you go to panel, you need a moderator, but without moderator, you go anywhere, just like the way how I talked before. So. For the conference in Berlin, which is called the Art Leaders Network, the first question at 9, 10 a.m. is about art in a populist age. Well, populist, that's a big word. It's saying, well, institutions aim to become more accessible. The artwork continues to be viewed as elitist. While museum intimidating and galleries unwelcoming, how to strike the right balance between building new audiences and serving a core constituency, what strategies are working? Well, if you guys been reading Fresco's website, I suggest you guys just ping up those guys who are on panel talk and show them what we're gonna do to create a better solution. So far, the museum model in today's age is really about just simply between a visitor and the visitor and the organizer. Each museum is like this. For us, if we go to a museum, you, uh, what you can do is just take photos and grab home a couple souvenirs. That's you know, print the artwork on pencil case and mass produce it and call that you bring home something. Well, that does not create an appreciation of art for people. Just simply to take photos, you quickly forget about it. Or sometimes there might be some you know very very overwhelming experience if you're seeing a fabulous show. But other than that, everything you left is your memory. That thing cannot be leave a profound impact that you can share with others. Memories are intangible. We want something that's tangible that can be shared. I think that's the art word I, I think we should focus on. It's really, you guys said, we said we don't now want to be elitists. Well, you take today, look, look at today's art museum system, it's still quite elitist. Is that really you don't need money, you donate 20 grand, you donate 1 million to the museum. Museum give you preferential treatment. You have dinner with the director. You gotta go to all kind of private openings. You gotta go to the artist studios. You get all the perks, all the good stuff in the art world. Well, what happened to the visitors? We just need to line up and then go in and take a photo of the painting and you call that we have access to art? Well, I don't think so. I think there should be a better solution we can bring. 
That's why if you go to fresco.org slash museum, you see this solution we're bringing with Fresco. That's really, we propose each museum having a different kind of tag. A tag that has Fresco QR code on it, of that specific artwork. Which we, we hope each museum, since you guys already, each museum, since you guys already digitized your painting online, literally every painting is made on public domain right now, before the 19, before 1900, because there's a law for that. And then, even every museum is digitalized, it, there's not a good way for engaging. Well, we propose them, you guys can upload your painting to Fresco platform, literally uploading the, just like as you could upload a painting to WordPress. It's almost like you, you just upload the painting's HD photo and then a video about the painting on the blockchain and just input all the information. And from there, we generate a QR code for your artwork as well as, as, well as a detailed display of that artwork. And we hope each museum, organization, or gallery can print out tag similar to the tag you guys have right now, but with a QR code on it that when you scan, it, it leads to a fresco platform showing this artwork's pr provenance it's people who have added fresh trust to it, as well as the fresh edition history, as well as even better, if that painting is uh, the one that has not released fresh edition yet, can help people buy fresh edition straight out of that painting. Or even if that painting released fresh edition already, how people, if they want to buy it, they can buy from a potential seller who owns the edition before them. Guys, imagine how that going to change the museum into. That's gonna create a ton of food traffic for museum because you're literally, we're literally changing the model between a visitor to a to a organizer to into like a engager, like a how to say a participant and a host. Where people, I go to a museum like mad. I do not just view this rainbow rain as something that's just you. You guys are not gonna sell it, or I can just take photo of it. Sometimes not allowed to take photo of it, but with fresco. I can just scan the photo, the, the, the painting tag next to the Rembrandt, scan the QR code, and get to know this Rembrandt on blockchain. And even better, I, if there's an edition available, I can even get a fresh edition of that Rembrandt on blockchain, offered by the museum, or by, mostly by the museum, because the museum owns the, like I said, the unique artworks, blockchain data. So think about in that scope, there's so many artworks in the museum, in a mega museum or even a smaller museum that they, they propose they do not want to sell it. But if you guys want to let more people engage with it, I think this will be a way. We're creating a new kind of like a engagement funnel. Because literally that's how Lithograph come into being. That's how screen, that's how silk screen print come into, be, come into being. It's that people try to change the boundary of art. That's why you have the digital art coming up. So this, we're changing the digital art even further to the blockchain data art. So when people own a blockchain data certificate, if a museum or gallery is saying, yes, this is a certificate from us on blockchain, this, you can get a lot of people investing in art, just pay a fraction of the money. So imagine a work from the, from Met, Metropolitan Museum of Art. It has a Rembrandt, and it recently uploaded to Fresco and this Rembrandt is for a new upcoming show. So Matt just go on Fresco platform and acquire 3,000 Fresco token added to this painting. And Matt just said, okay, Matt released on his Twitter or Facebook saying, guys, we're releasing the first edition of this Rembrandt for 100 edition, each at 30 Fresco token each. And then we, they say, we're only releasing it at 9 a.m. EST, like Eastern time and specific day. So people can either buy the edition online or people can go view the painting at the museum. And you think about, and even after you were fortunate enough, just like if you buy Supreme, you are able to acquire an edition. Right now only at 30 frets, which is, I don't know, we do not talk about the market price, but we just say it's 30 frets. So you right now have the painting, of the, this fresh edition of 30 frets, and then imagine more and more people adding fresh trust to that original Rembrandt to the map because the map has a tag there. People like them, like that Rembrandt, they'll just, even people in the museum or anywhere in the world, they can add fresh trust to that Rembrandt. And think about the, the value of the total fresh trust value going to increase from there. From 3,000 maybe one day to 300,000 to 3 million. And 3 million divided by, you know, 3 million divided by 100. And that's, 
and that will be the worth of each first edition. So the first edition is not static. The value of it, it's just gonna keep increasing because the total pool, the first trust value is gonna only increase. And that's how we design the system. It's an irrevocable addition to the value of our, that's what we call fresh trust. And the each fresh addition is the fresh trust, the total amount of fresh trust divided by the number of fresh edition. And this is gonna be very, very huge. Like for museums that are not getting enough you know, foot traffic, for art nonprofit foundations who, ha who has collections in their, you know, in their foundation and in the office, they even do their own public show for free. But they, as you know, at a nonprofit, they do not only sell their painting. So through so this way, you can allow people to go to their foundation to engage with a purpose, with their mission, while creating a better, just making people more engaged with art and even further their cause. I think that'll be very key because to take a non-elitist approach, you're really going to think about how can we, it ain't going to work if you just still keep playing with the current population. Because think about how many people in the world that host the art painting, host the artwork, let it be painting or sculptures, the any form. That number is less than 3 million people globally. Because transaction of artwork, physical artwork, it takes too much effort and taxes and everything. With this, with fresh edition, we were able, museum were able to create blockchain, a new just a new kind of like blockchain data asset online, a fresh edition, a blockchain certificate of work. And that can be transferred, traded, created, and bought by anyone on the network, your entire world. So Matt has this release of new Rembrandt. A guy from Ukraine or a guy from China can just buy it with one click. And I stay up. It's just almost like when you buy screen. It's a global sale. And anyone can be a part of the owner of that limited edition work. And that I think gonna lower, really the lower the barrier of entry to art. Because guys, if you wanna solve the elitism in art, it's always about lowering the barrier of entry. Don't say you guys don't want to do it. I'm talking about the art people who's decision maker. Don't think you guys don't want to do it. If you don't do it, well, Christie thought to be shouldn't sell Picasso ceramics for $2,000 or 1,000 pounds each trying to attract people to buy it. If you don't do it, don't sell those Warhol screen, pr sc screen prints for you know 3,000 each, where today I go to club, I open a table, that's three times the price than that. So you guys already want to lower the price. But if you keep playing the current population, it ain't gonna work. Why are you playing with a global population? Why don't we let more people to come in and engage with art in a more meaningful way, that is join the art market? And we're doing this very, very radically and doing this very, very, keep the, everybody's interest in mind because for our token, initially we planned the ICO and we're going through the registration process with FEMA. But we realized that if we do an ICO with today's murky market, retail investors' interest will not be protected. Because me personally, I'm actively involved. To, I bought a lot of ICOs and I know how the price drop a lot as it's today's market. All the money I should have used on stock, on you know, buying artworks, I get them into ICO and it does not pan out very well, at least for now. For me, it's fine. Like I can handle that amount of like financial, or like, like financial risk. But for in retail investors, that's too much at risk. Think about it for a 30 year old Ukraine, you know, single, single mother, like a raise her, her family all by herself. Like, I, I do not feel comfortable to ask them to invest in a token. At least that's not how my way to do things. Like, I do not want to just, I do not want to simply ruin people's life because I see a lot of ICOs tear family apart. Like, that's not what we want. So, we abandoned the whole ICO model. We gave away 300 million tokens for free. The complete ICO model, not a, just, it's not a similar airdrop anymore. It's a whole ICO amount of money we're gonna raise. We do not need that money anymore. We change the approach. We release this 300 million token for free to the community. But we're following a POW. That is a proof of work. That each people who want to claim our token need to fill a 100 question test about our world, mostly about our world, and about Fresco and the change we're gonna bring. Guys, this is what you call the proof of work. It's literally like, we're doing this for a limited supply token. It's almost like Bitcoin mining, where the 100 question is a mining process. 
And after you finish the mining, if you win, and you get 2,000 Fresco token. And through this process, we can build up a community of more than 100,000 active like, token holders. And lot of people who know about art from our 100 question. If you go to our Telegram group, you see thank you messages from around the world just saying, thank you guys. You guys let us know so much about the, how the art market functions and they want to actually participate in the art market and they want to support Fresco. I think that's kind of organic growth we're trying to build. Like we do not want to sell anything. We, we're giving away everything. We're educating people on yeah, that you should join this thing. Like you should learn that our market is really, our investment is not that hard. Like our investment should be available for everyone. Like that's the goal we try to build. And so building off of that, I think every step is working out perfectly because we're releasing a token to 100,000 people. And then today we're talking about how museum could be reach out to more people in the populist age. Just how museum can reach out to more people. I think this is all connected. Guys, fresh edition, I think it would be truly beneficial for the everything. Just allow me to have a coffee break.